Hi, everybody, and welcome to Facebook Live. Uh, if you're tuning in, either a Good Parenting Brighter Children, uh, this also is that's where we're broadcasting from because there's still some issues with Facebook that doesn't allow us to um, do things on closed Facebook groups. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about some awesome facts and what they do for your brain, one in particular. But before I start it, I want to give you just a brief um, introduction and the background, uh, my background. Uh, in 2003, it wasn't a great year for me health-wise. I wasn't feeling well. I had gone to actually several doctors and they took a couple of vials of blood out of my arm and pretty much didn't find anything wrong. But I'm a type A personality. I'm pretty driven. And so I don't like anything to stop my momentum and my pace. And my pace kept getting slower and slower. And so I was getting more and more frustrated. Then on August 3rd of 2003, I woke up and pretty much couldn't move. My husband had to help me into the bathroom. And I was flat on my back uh, for about two months, during which time I would get up long enough to look on the internet and try and find a doctor that could help me. I finally found one at the end of September and I went into him and uh, they took out 28 vials of blood out of my arm and did a bunch of other tests and won't go into all of the things that were wrong, but there was a lot of things that were wrong. Number one, I had an autoimmune disorder. When you have an autoimmune, you pretty much have it the rest of your life. And the big thing was my adrenals. Um, they were shutting down and uh, so, over the period of uh, about six months, I took 11 different types of medications and hormones and all different kinds of things. And actually uh, for October, November and December, I was taking them and then I took them again in 2004. But by January of 2004, I was feeling good. I decided I wanted to go back to school and study nutrition. I wanted to study both Eastern and Western approaches to nutrition because I knew that my diet, even though it was clean, I was eating a lot of synthetic foods uh, I was looking at total calories and uh, low fat or non-existent fat, which is terrible. So I went and uh, in these 31 classes, I uh, earned three certifications and uh, read 74 books. I have about 10 of those books in my resource section on my blog that you can look at and I'll refer to a couple tonight. But one of the biggest things that I learned was from the class that I took on fats and how it is how important it is for our brain. If you don't know it or not, your brain is 90% fat. So your brain loves and craves fat. Unfortunately, it's not potato chip or French fry fat, darn, but it's fats that um, really help to build the brain. The fats that you would find like in salmon or in coconut oil or cod liver oil or um, avocados or eggs or nuts or walnuts. Those are the good kinds of fat that your brain likes and feeds on. So um, I'm mainly going to focus on cod liver oil tonight. I think most of you are familiar with um, coconut oil and all the different studies that have been done on that. The interesting thing about nutrition is that uh, if you think politics and religion is controversial, uh, nutrition is about 100 times more controversial. One day uh, they'll say that something is the greatest thing since frozen bread and it will give you amazing health and about three weeks later they vilify it and say that it's the worst thing you can possibly take. And it was interesting too, in one class I'd be in one classroom and going to those, that particular class, I'd go across the hall to another classroom and even the things in those classes, some of them contradicted what the other, the other professor said. So it's a very interesting subject. So some of the things that you read on the brain that says that it's 60%, it's actually 90%. So what I'm going to focus on is cod liver oil. On my blog this week, I give you 50 reasons of why you should take coconut oil, which I think is amazing, but most people are familiar with that. So the cod liver oil, I give you 20 reasons, but I'm going to go in and give you more information tonight. Cod liver oil contains vitamin A, D, E, and K, those are all fat soluble vitamins. Those are the ones that get stored in the liver. And when your body needs them, it pulls it out. Um, they're very, very important. We'll go into each one of them, except for vitamin K, we won't have time. And we're gonna talk about the omega-3s. Omega-3s are essential fatty acids as are omega-9s. Essential meaning that your body doesn't make them. So your body has to get them through food sources. And of course, a really good food source is cod liver oil. So I have a few slides to show you. We're going to start out with slide number one. It's on vitamin A. <clears throat> vitamin A is known as the retinol vitamin because the largest concentration is found in the retina of your eye. It's also found in the brain and it's also found in the thyroid. In fact, your endocrine system absolutely needs the presence of fat soluble A. 
Now, the only form of A that your body can use is um, the fat soluble form. So if you eat the plant form like carrots or sweet potatoes or any of the green vegetables, yes, they contain vitamin A, but they contain the plant form. So once they go into the body, then they have to be converted to the fat soluble form. And the ratio is usually a three to one, a five to one or a seven to one, meaning three units of the plant form equals one unit of the fat soluble or five or seven or whatever it is. The ratios vary according to your health. If you're in, in good healthy condition, the ratio will be a three to one. So three units of uh, plant will convert to one unit of uh, the fat soluble, but your body can only use the fat soluble. Now, another thing that's really important about vitamin A is that none of your other vitamins or minerals will work unless there's the presence of fat soluble A. And that's important to remember because you want that, you want the rest of your vitamins and minerals to work. Now, one other thing too, um, if you're saying, well, I take a multi-mineral, I take a multivitamin, I'm getting all the vitamins and minerals I need. Well, those are synthetic forms, okay? And the synthetic form, your body has to break down its own tissues in order to use it. Usually it's difficult for the body to do it. So it passes out through your system. A few years ago, I read a study that was done. They went into sewers to find out what was the majority of what was in the sewer. And guess what they found? Vitamins, you know, vitamins that were not able to be broken down into the body and now they've passed out. And so it's basically a waste of your money to be buy, buying these. What you really want is you want food sources because then they are considered bioavailable or the body knows immediately how to use them and uh, they can use them in all different ways to help you to become healthy. Okay, so let's go to slide number two here. <clears throat> Okay, what I want to, uh, you to know is um, I've mainly taken just a few points on each of these vitamins. There's many, many more points I could go into, but I wanna focus on the points that have to do with brain development and brain organization. So if you can see there, uh, vitamin helps with sensory perception and integration. It also helps with language processing. Now, <clears throat> these are really important because if you have a child who struggles in school and one out of every four children now that go into school, they have some kind of a learning disability. That's 25% of the population. So what actually will help them is to have the presence of fat soluble A. That's another reason why you want them to take cod liver oil. Now there's a process that's really interesting and it's called myelination. And it has to do with <clears throat> synapses and neurons that we have in our brain. So we're gonna pretend that this is, the, here's synapses and here's the neurons. Myelination means that the neurons and the synapses are actually working together, all right? But metaphorically speaking, we're going to look at the neurons and the synapses and they're cold right now, they need a coat. They need some kind of coating so that they can be warm and so that they can work together. That coating is cod liver oil because it has vitamin A in it. It has the mega threes in it and it coats the neurons and it coats the synapses. So now they're going to work together. Let me tell you an interesting thing when my son, uh, and I've talked about my third son who was um, had a traumatic birth, was left with severe learning disabilities. Okay, so he started into therapy at the age of three into speech therapy. So he was tested then, then he was tested again at five and a half by uh, the school psychologist and by private psychologists. Then we had him tested by occupational therapists. He went to doctors. There was not one of these people, not one, that ever explained to me about myelination in the brain and how something like cod liver oil would have helped him or some kind of fat would have helped him and helped his brain. And then this myelination part would have taken place. Myelination is crucial for kids or adults or anyone who struggles with learning because when it coats the neurons and the synapses, then those areas of the brain start working together. ADHD lessons, anxiety lessons, um, their ability to absorb, retain, and retrieve information increases. So you want that myelination to take place. Okay, next slide. Okay, so you see some of, um, oh, that's, this is on vitamin D now. Okay, <clears throat> so vitamin A is extremely important for learning. So is vitamin D. The vitamins were actually named in the 1800s and they misnamed vitamin A and vitamin D 
they actually act like hormones in the body as opposed to acting like vitamins, particularly vitamin D. That is why you can actually talk to your medical doctor about vitamin D because it acts like a hormone. They have more knowledge about vitamin D. Vitamin D3 is the, uh, the type of vitamin D that you want because again, it's bioavailable. Your body knows exactly what to do with it and it's more easily absorbable. If you look at all of these different things, the one that I wanna point out is the depression one. Depression is increasing in young people and um, so vitamin D and even doctors, there's numbers of doctors that I've talked to, and even a couple of my daughter-in-laws have said that their doctors have asked them about you know, um, any kind of depression that they might have, and they've put them on vitamin D. Your doctor, sometimes you have to ask them for a vitamin D test, and they'll do the blood test. It's a simple test, and they come back with numbers. All right, my doctor wants to see my vitamin D levels between 50 and 70. I don't absorb well, and so my uh, they put me on mega doses of vitamin D and the highest they've ever been able to get me is a 45, but um, it actually helps with depression. So doctors are putting patients on it. Now, if they put you on 2000 IUs, which is international units per day, that is a maintenance dose. So whatever your number is, 2000 IUs is only going to keep you at that number. You would have to be increased like to 5,000. I take 10,000 a day for six months and then I, my doctor has me go down to 5,000 a day. And I have to tell you, I think all of us from time to time have had waves of depression or something, myself included, and vitamin D I have noticed definitely helps. So vitamin D will help in the brain. It helps to build the brain. It helps with all those things, but it also helps with depression. Next slide. Okay, on these, these are all different things that vitamin D helps with, but I want you to look at the one, the last one, nervousness. Now, that is very interesting, and that kind of goes to show you that vitamins work together. It's usually the B vitamins, B as in boy, those are the vitamins that usually have a calming effect, or magnesium, the mineral, has a calming effect. And, you, and the B vitamins would be like things that you would find like in yogurt, it has B vitamins, uh, oatmeal, wheat bread, lentils, all of those have B vitamins. A lot of people, when they talk about comfort foods, those comfort foods, if you ask them, they would have B vitamins because they have a calming effect. So it's amazing that vitamin D also has a calming effect. So if people have anxiety, vitamin D actually will help to calm a child down. So the vitamin D and the vitamin B, D is in dog, B is in boy, they work together and you want all of your vitamins to work synerg synergistically together and to complement one another. And vitamin D will do that as well. Okay, next slide. Okay, the next one is vitamin E. Now, if you see at the top, it says that it's a heart food. In the 1980s, they came out and they talked about how vitamin D could really help with the heart. And so people thought, you know how people are, they'll think, okay, well, if a little bit is going to help me, then a lot more is going to help me a lot more. So people started taking mega doses of vitamin E and it had a backlash effect. It actually was causing uh, disruptions and problems with the heart. So people, their doctors had to tell them, you know, get off all this vitamin D because again, they're fat soluble and they do uh, get stored in the liver. Okay, but the thing that I want you to look on this one is that it actually helps with the adrenal glands. If you're a type A personality, if you're very driven, if you go, 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 which basically means you're probably a mom, um, <clears throat> yes, vitamin E will help. You'll find vitamin E in avocado. Avocado also contains the omega-9s, okay? So there are essential fatty acids in avocados as well. And there's a lot of other uh, foods, but if you're taking a tablespoon of cod liver oil a day, you're going to get your E vitamins as well. So you're getting A, D, E, and K. We're not gonna go into K. The next slide that I want to um, go into is the omega-3s. Okay, so you have omega-3, sixes, and nine. These are fatty acids. Again, they're essential. Your body doesn't make them, so you have to get them with food. Now there's two main uh, uh, omega-3s. And by the way, I already told you about omega nines. Omega sixes, okay, so we have the three sixes and nines, so they're triplets. Okay, the omega six is actually the um, evil triplet. Um, that's with all of your meat, so you have to be careful with how much of that you're consuming because that can cause additional issues. But the ones that build and strengthen the brain are the omega threes and the omega nines. Omega threes are found in cod liver oil. There's two types, as I said, the EPA. 
that does not stand for Environmental Protection Agency. It's a big long name, I can't even pronounce it. That one helps with inflammation. It knocks down inflammation. Uh, it's interesting because people have said to me, well, I don't really care about inflammation. You wanna care about inflammation. Arthritis is inflammation. <laughs> inflammation kills. You wanna get that um, inflammation knocked down. Even when we eat a big meal, uh, there's a certain amount of inflammation that goes on as we're digesting the meal. Okay, so the other one is the DHA. <clears throat> okay, the DHA, that is the one that helps with the brain. Okay, that is the one that builds the neurons, that build, build the brain, that feed all of those neurons, that coat the, the um, synapses and the neurons and, and helps them to work together. So you want both of those. Those are both extremely important. Okay, let's talk a little bit about dosage. <clears throat> All right, it depends on, I wouldn't ask my doctor about dosage. Um, doctors are not equipped, um, nor have they had the training or the learning in, in uh, uh, nutrition. And a lot of people, they go to their doctor for every single thing that goes wrong with them. They're only equipped to what they have learned in school and it hasn't been nutrition. So you either want to read a book about it or you want to go to a nutritionist or talk to somebody who does have a background in nutrition. The dosages vary, okay? You're not going to get anything really definitive, uh, but a, a tablespoon a day for adults, and usually they consider adults either eight and above or 12 and above. But children between the ages of birth and about eight years old can take a teaspoon a day. All right, and if the mother's nursing, she can still give, the, and if she's taking a, a tablespoon a day of the cod liver oil, she can still give her baby maybe a half teaspoon of cod liver oil. And, you know, too much is not going to help you. I, I know some people who give their children and themselves three tablespoons a day. I think that's a little over the top. Um, one thing I was going to say, too, in the summer months, sometimes people have asked me, well, should I, you know, they're out in the sun a lot. Should I go back on vitamin or cod liver oil? You can if you want. It depends on how you absorb. When you go out, uh, vitamin D is the sunshine vitamin. I forgot to mention this. And so when you go out in the sun, this is the thin part of your skin. And so you want to put your arms up like this for 20 minutes or down to your side. And that's where the vitamin D is going to uh, get absorbed. If you're not a sun person, then continue taking the vitamin D. Um, okay, how to take it? Well, um, a lot of people say, well, I take fish oil pills. Isn't that going to be enough? Let me tell you a couple of things about fish oil. Um, Mercury, mercury is water soluble. So it lodges in the tissues of the fish. Fish oil is taken from the tissues of the fish. Now, if you go on my blog, you'll see when I talk about mercury, uh, you can click on it and it'll take you to a link and it will give you the brands that contain, that have fish oil and contain no mercury as opposed to the brands that do take, that do have some mercury in them. And of course they say it's such a slight amount of mercury, it's only equal to if you ate fish three times a week. Well, the one thing you want to understand about mercury is mercury passes the blood-brain barrier, okay? And it kills neurons that are associated with Alzheimer's. So why do you want any mercury in your system, traces or non-traces? Now, cod liver oil has no mercury in it because it is taken from the liver of the codfish. Mercury does not lodge in the organs of any of the fishes. It only is in the tissues. Now, another thing you'd want to take cod liver oil over your fish oil pills is the fact that you would have to take 12 fish oil pills and each one of those pills would have to be 1,000 milligrams per pill. Are you getting 12,000 milligrams of all that fish oil to equal one tablespoon of the cod liver oil? Plus, you're getting all of those other things in it as well. So I would stick with the cod liver oil. Now, what you can do is you can mix it in juice. Um, I would suggest like Welch's grape juice or any kind of juice that does not have high fructose corn syrup in it. High fructose corn syrup is a genetically modified sugar. Your body does not recognize it as a sugar. It recognizes it as a fat and the liver doesn't know what to do with it. And it says to your body, store it. So when you see people who have built up a fat on their backs or their stomachs, and they're young, um, it's usually that they're eating a lot of foods that contain high fructose corn syrup. So when you're going to take cod liver oil, what you want to do is to get some kind of a juice. I use Welch's grape juice. Now, there's also a lot of multi-level marketing companies that have a juice, something that you can, um, that people, you know, swear by. But, and usually those are really good sources of vitamins and minerals, 
that they are very poor sources of fats. In fact, 99.9% .9 of them contain no fats. So stick with your juice, just put a tablespoon of the cod liver oil in it. Now, the kind that I suggest is the, um, <clears throat> this is the Carlson's brand. Um, I have it on my blog, it's lemon flavor. Now there's time to be cheap, there's times to be cheap, and there's times not to be cheap. This is the time not to be cheap. You want the lemon flavor. You'll, I think it runs about $32, $33 a bottle, but this will last quite a bit. Once you open it for your first tablespoon and put it in the refrigerator. And I just put a tablespoon in my drink and I drink it down. And it's very simple. You don't burp or belch uh, and everybody thinks you're gonna taste fish. You don't taste any fish. The only thing you're going to taste is the lemon flavor. So make sure you get the lemon flavor. The other one is, yeah, it's less expensive but you're not gonna be able to gag the thing down and neither will your kids. And you don't want that. You want something that's going to taste good and that they'll take without any problem or worries. Okay, um, so I think that is it. Let me ask you, or I'll tell you a couple of other things. If you go to my blog, um, at the top of the navigation bar, it says resources. And if you go into there, I have 10 books on nutrition. I'm going to add little by little all 74 of them. This one was uh, What to Eat. Uh, I would say that this is one of the few books that I had in all my classes where the information wasn't controversial. Actually, she worked for the government. She did retire when they were changing the, uh, the pyramid, the food pyramid. She talked about the nightmare that that was and that they were getting into that. But it's very interesting. It gets a lot of really sound, solid information, but maybe some of those books will help you as well. Um, I also, on my blog, I give a recipe. This is something that I concocted. It has cod liver oil in it, it has coconut oil in it, it has brewer's yeast in it, it has the, um, everything that you need from vitamins A through Z and um, all of your minerals in it as well. Just keep in mind, remember that you need fat soluble A for all of your other vitamins and minerals to work. So you're going to get it through there. And you need those omega-3s for the building of the brain, but the omega-3s and the A and the D and the E and the K all work together to build a bigger, better brain. And that's what we want for our kids. We want them to have the best situation health-wise so that when we send them to school, they're going to be able to be better students and learn better. Um, I don't see any comments from anybody. And um, if you have any, you can always put them in uh, on Facebook and I'll check that a lot. Or you can make comments also on the blog post and I can see three things on that as well. I just noticed one thing and actually I've gone 22 minutes. Let me take another quick minute. And talk about why vitamin D is low in everybody and why they fortified a lot of breads and cereals and milk and everything with vitamin D is because everybody's been slathering on sunscreens forever. So you slather on all those sunscreens and nothing can penetrate, okay? So if you're out in the sun for 20 minutes, it will absorb and you, will, you do not burn the first 20 minutes. When sunscreens came out in the 1970s, there was a mathematical formula that was actually used to help you to understand how high of an SPF you should use and so on and so forth, depending on how long you're going to be in the sun. The only thing that I would go out in the sun for is for, you know, to absorb vitamin D. Other than that, I would definitely cover up, use a hat or something because you want to protect the skin. But that's another great thing about it. Um, cod liver oil, you're actually getting the vitamin D so you don't really necessarily have to go out in the sun and, and bake, bake away. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I know that Monday nights are busy and hectic. I appreciate you being here. And again, if you have any questions, shoot the questions and I'm happy to answer them. Thank you and good night.